All right, gang, here we go. This is Chem 1, Unit 2, uh, Chapter 21, Part 2. So this is Nuclear Chemistry, Part 2. All right, we're going to be talking about types of radiation. We're going to talk about how to write nuclear equations, uh, balanced nuclear equations. All right, so we last time we talked about radioisotopes, and we, under, we understand that radioisotopes are unstable isotopes that undergo radiation. Okay, and radiation are the penetrating rays and particles that those things give off as they're changing their makeup of their nucleus, right? Remember, they, they change because the nucleus is unstable, and they're unstable because the proton to neutron ratio is off balance, all right? So uh, give off radiation, and there's three types of radiation that we're gonna talk about. There's several other ones, uh, but these are the three we're gonna focus on in this class, all right? Alpha, beta, and gamma, all right? Here we go. <clears throat> so radiation, all right, alpha particles, are the nucleus of a helium atom okay so remember helium has two protons always right two protons and then remember helium's atomic mass is like uh, 4.002 etc something like that so we know that a helium is essentially two protons and two neutrons stuck together okay so an alpha particle is literally a helium atom that doesn't have any electrons so because it doesn't have any electrons but it's got those two protons it has a plus two charge all right so alpha particles are positively charged specifically plus two charge there's two different ways that you'll see people write, write at alpha particle okay either like this as a 4-2 helium because it's a helium atom right and remember this guy here that is the mass number remember from the last chapter that's the mass number and that guy there is the atomic number okay remember the atomic number is the number of protons and the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons all right and then the other symbol you'll see is this alpha right here uh, so when you see my write it'll look like this like it look kind of like a Jesus fish all right uh, you might also see somebody write it like this and throw in the 4-2 just like that just know that it's essentially the same thing all right um, alpha particles because they're heavy and positively charged they don't penetrate very far so really you could protect yourself from alpha particles by simply putting on uh, putting a piece of paper between you and it in fact alpha particles for the most part can't even pass through a sheet of paper uh, or they can't even get passed through your skin all right so alpha particles not really a big deal they can't really do much harm to us all right so now we're going to take our first gander into writing a balanced nuclear equation. All right, so we've got uranium-238. So this is our, uh, our atom of uranium, and it's undergoing alpha decay. All right, so that means that it's going to be emitting alpha radiation. So you're going to start by writing your element, and you're going to write it like this with the mass number right so this is our element x our mass number is going to go up here and our atomic number goes down here and you're always going to write it like this when you're doing a, um, a nuclear equation it makes life much easier all right so your mass number that's the 238 so we'll write a 238 up here and then our atomic number for uranium we have to look at the periodic table because you know it's just handy so the uranium is 92 okay so the atomic number is 92 mass number is 238 all right, so this is undergoing alpha decay. So we're going to draw an arrow showing that there's a nuclear reaction going on. And we know that it's undergoing alpha decay. So we're going to write a 4 to helium because there's an alpha particle that's coming off of it. All right, now here's the trick with nuclear radiation, or nuclear equations. Super easy. We just need to make sure that all the top numbers on each side of the equation equal each other, and all the bottom numbers add up and equal each other. All right, so over here, our top numbers equal 238 on the left side of the equation. Right now, on the right side, our top numbers equal 4. So we need another 234 over here. All right, now we look at the bottom numbers. Okay, so uh, there's 92 over here and 2 here, so that means we need 90. Okay, 90 plus 2 is 92, so we put a 90 here. Then we have to look at the periodic table and figure out which element is 90. We see that it's thorium. All right, so we write thorium for the element, and that's it. Okay, uranium-238 undergoes alpha decay, so it becomes a 4,2 helium atom, right? That's your alpha particle coming off, and then you get 234,90 at thorium, right? Thorium-234 as the, as the guy that's coming off, all right? Uh, so that's alpha particle. Here we go for beta particles. All right, beta particle is essentially an electron, okay? So remember, alpha particles was a helium atom, or helium nucleus, 
all right? Beta particles are essentially electrons. So remember, electrons are super, super light, so their mass is essentially zero, and we say that their atomic number is negative one because their charge is exactly opposite of a proton, okay? So this is how we write a beta particle, all right? Or we might use the like, Greek letter capital beta for that, all right? Uh, you might also see people write it as like this. This is how I write my betas, just like with a B, with like a, you know, like I just drew it too long. And so you'll see a zero, negative one like that as well. Uh, they have it up here in this example. All right. So if you, so essentially this is where the beta particle comes from. You've got, if you start with a neutron, okay, and uh, you need it to turn into a proton in order to make it more stable, then you can actually, because of the, the quarks that are in there, and we'll go over this maybe a little bit more in class if we have time, all right, this guy will actually become one proton and one electron. Right? And that kind of makes sense because a proton is plus one and an electron is minus one. If you manage to combine those two, you would equal a neutron, right? Okay, so, um, so that's kind of where the idea of the beta particle comes from. They're more penetrating than alpha particles, but they're still not very penetrating. You can stop them with a piece of aluminum foil or even a thin piece of wood. All right, well, uh, humans, you can you still need to, like for the most part, beta radiation isn't gonna do much to you, but it's not necessarily something you wanna just like not worry about if there's an excess amount of beta radiation in wherever you are. All right, so here let's do uh, a nuclear balancing nuclear equation for beta decay, all right? So N14, so we've got nitrogen 14, so we got nitrogen 14, nitrogen is element number seven, okay? So we put that there. So nitrogen for seven, and it's undergoing beta decay. So we're going to write our nuclear reaction arrow because there's a nuclear reaction going on, all right? And we write our beta particle. Well, our beta particle is zero minus one, and then an electron or a beta symbol doesn't matter. So zero minus one electron, and then we're just going to do the same thing. Make sure that our numbers on either side of our equation equal each other. So we've got a 14 up here on the left side and a zero. So that means we need a 14 here. All right, and then here we've got a seven and we've got a minus one, so that means this guy needs to become an eight. Yeah, you see that? Because eight minus one equals seven, or negative one plus eight equals seven, either way. All right, so this guy becomes oxygen. So when we have beta decay, really our nucleus is losing a neutron and gaining a proton. So the mass number remains constant. See, it's 14 and 14. But our atomic number went up by one. We went from seven protons to eight protons. All right, that's the power of the beta decay. All right, the last one is gamma radiation. All right, gamma radiation is a high energy photon. All right, or it's electromagnetic radiation. And we're gonna talk about electromagnetic radiation next unit in depth. All right, it's written as a gamma symbol. Okay, it kind of looks like a Y, but it's off center. Okay, I write it like this. That's your gamma. It kind of looks like, uh, you know, the cancer awareness ribbons. All right, um, a lot of times gamma rays are emitted along with alpha and beta particles, but they don't necessarily need to be. So sometimes you'll see like, uh, when you have an alpha decay or a beta decay, you'll see gamma rays come off as well. That's super, super common, all right? Um, but they can also just be given off all on their own. So just because you have a gamma radiation does not necessarily mean you have alpha or beta going on as well, all right? They're extremely penetrating and very dangerous. They're very high energy, so they can do a lot of damage. So gamma radiation is really what you want to watch out for. And this is how I remember it. Gamma radiation is what turned the Bruce Banner into the Hulk. Okay, and nobody would, like, being the Hulk would be kind of cool, but at the same time, it would kind of suck, right? You'd much rather be Thor. He's got the cool blonde hair and all that stuff, and you'd get to look like Chris Hemsworth, all right? Anyway, so to stop gamma radiation, you need several meters of concrete or several centimeters of lead, all right? Um, and so during class, I'll show you, you know, when we talk about this in class, I'll have, you know, a... Uh, a Geiger counter and I have some sources of radiation and some pieces of light and we'll be able to see what how it stops it so on and so forth all right um, so that's that now gamma radiation is kind of interesting its balanced chemical or nuclear reactions are actually pretty simple all right so um, because gamma radiation is a high energy photon its mass is zero and its charge is zero so it's zero and zero so if you have something undergoing gamma radiation it's literally the same thing coming out the other side so say you have x and it's uh, y and z okay and it's undergoing gamma radiation all right so you got gamma zero zero and then you got to get x y and z coming out the other side 
all right so gamma radiation is zero zero so you, there's not really any need to write a balanced chemical equation around it all right so here's our final example here we got your thorium 230 undergoing alpha beta and gamma decay all right so um, we're gonna work this a couple of ways all right so we're gonna do it uh, individually and see what it does and then we're gonna do it um, so they do uh, do it all at the same time, just for funsies, just to see if we can. All right, so thorium undergoing alpha decay. So remember, alpha decay, we'll write our alpha symbol. Four, two, you can also write helium, just fine. All right, so these guys need abs, so it's the third 230, so this means it needs to be 226. All right, and then 90, and then this two, so this has got to be 88. So we look at the periodic table, we find 88. And we see that it, where to it go is radium, so R A. So there's R. That's alpha decay, right? So maybe I'll label this guy here, uh, alpha decay. All right. Now let's do the same thing, but we're gonna make it undergo beta decay, right? So 230, 90. We're just practicing all of them, right? Uh, so this guy, so beta decay zero minus one, our beta symbol. All right. Um, and so 230. And so we just need a 230 here to make those add up. And then 90 minus 1, so this guy's got to be 91, right? Because 90, and then this is negative 1, so 91 minus 1 equals 90. So we look at the periodic table, find 91, and we see it's protactinium, or PA, all right? So this is our beta decay, all right? Beta decay. All right, and then we'll, we'll just go ahead and make it undergo... Uh, alpha or gamma decay even though we already talked about how easy that is so remember gamma decay is zero zero so this guy remains completely unchanged all right so thorium and so this is our gamma decay all right easy peasy now for funsies let's just see if we can do all three at once all right all right so 230 90 thorium all right so nuclear reaction, so we've got an alpha particle, so that's our 4, 2, alpha, all right? And then we also have a 0, minus 1, beta, all right? And then we also have a 0, 0, gamma. Now, this doesn't really ever happen, but it's kind of fun to mess with the number, see if we can make it work out, all right? So here we go. What does it turn into? Well, we know, so we've got a 4 plus 0 plus 0 needs to equal 230 plus some number, so that's got to be 226. So the mass number is going to be 226, all right? Uh, so 2 minus 1 plus 0 plus some number has to equal 90. Well, 2 plus a minus 1, so that's 1. So that means this guy has to be 89. Okay, so if we take 89 minus 1, that gives us 88. Plus 2 gives us 90, so those all add up to each other. So we're at 89, so we find 89, and it's an actium. It's A, C, all right? So anyway, so that's, that's three ways to balance it. So that's all three combined, that bottom one, all right? And uh, I'd be more specific in an actual quiz or exam, which one I want you to do, as opposed to like kind of a, you know, more general hodgepodge example there. All right. So that's it as far. Oh, never mind. There's one more slide just kind of picturing all the stuff I almost forgot. All right. So the penetrating abilities of each of these. And this is just kind of a diagram representing each one. So we got alpha rays at the top. They're stopped by paper. Beta rays stopped by aluminum plates. Gamma rays are stopped by lead. Okay, now the last one is a neutron. So if you have a neutron for a high energy neutron just shooting through space, that's bad news. They're really, really, really hard to stop. The reason they're so hard to stop, and this is just kind of a side note, is because now if you think about it like uh, you got your nucleus, right? Your nucleus, we've talked about nucleus, is positive, dense, small particle in the middle, and it's surrounded by electrons. Now alpha particles are positively charged, electrons are negatively charged. So as your alpha particle comes into your nucleus, pass through, tries to pass through your nucleus, not only is it really big it has a higher a high likelihood of it well high kind of higher likelihood of hitting the proton in the or the nucleus but it's also slowed down by the electrons that surround your nucleus because you got a positive alpha particle coming in you got a negative electron cloud in so it'll slow it down as it comes through all right beta rays are smaller right because they're electrons they can come through so that because they're smaller than alpha particles they're easier to dodge the nucleus but they're still negatively charged so that electron cloud can slow it down okay gamma rays are waves okay and so they come through and they're also so hard to stop because they're they're mostly uncharged but they have high energy 
okay so they're able to pass through the nucleus but because they have high energy they're still stopped easily by the electron cloud and then then if you have a neutron passing through a high energy neutron neutrons are neutral and they're super small so they're hard they hardly ever hit the nucleus and the electron cloud doesn't slow them down as they pass through all right so there you go so that's their three types of radiation alpha beta gamma and how to write balanced chemical equations do some practice problems let me know if you have any questions and i'll see you on the flip side